Hi, it's Martha, just Martha Designs, and I wanted to come to you today with a dystonia update. Um, I had an opportunity today, ooh, traffic's loud today, had an opportunity today to visit the neurologist. My family doctor decided to send me to a neurologist because she stated that um, with my dystonia, that was something that needed to be monitored, as well as with my medications needed to be monitored. So she referred me to a neurologist, and I did not know that the neurologist was perhaps the only neurologist in within three counties, so it was quite a wait. Um, some of the other patients in the waiting room had stated that if you have an appointment, you're usually called back and seen within two hours of that appointment. So even if you decided that you were, um, you know, at two o'clock, you were closer to four o'clock being seen, and that's quite true. Um, I had a two o'clock appointment, and I was seen around four. But I met with a neurologist today, and I shared with her um, my diagnosis in 2016, and, and she asked me, um, what led up to, what led up to the dystonia, and I had shared with her that it was really something that I had always had. I had had brief episodes, usually during very stressful times, but it was after my father's death when it really became, um, disabling, if you will, and, and I don't really want to say disabling because I'm still, um, I'm, I'm still functioning, probably not functioning at 100% like I would want to or would hope to, but um, it was that moment that was stressful enough to send me into a full-blown, um, basically a, into full-blown dystonia instead of me having probably brief periods here and there. Um, so anyways, now we're going to have sirens outside. I'm so sorry. Um, so I spoke with her and shared with her some of my newest concerns that I've had. Um, I went from having a lot of episodes in my um, legs and my feet. Um, I have it in my neck, too. At times, um, my head will start to kind of pull and and the muscles will stiffen up and it's really hard to to move my head um but i've also had recently some newer uh, things besides <laughs> besides the vocal besides the neck besides um even in my torso at times um and especially my legs and my feet <laughs> Just recently, I started to develop issues with my hands, and I told her, I said, I was very concerned about that because um, I was actually teaching one of my classes one day, and I had reached up to gesture to the board, and I started to have a tremor, which I knew that if I did not draw my hand back down, I was going to end up with um, having a dystonic episode in the classroom, and I really did not want to have that in front of my students. But I told her that I knew that there was some issues going on because lately, um, even writing on the board, I, my hand would start to tire out and it would cramp. And usually when I start to get the cramps, the muscles freeze up and it's really hard to get things moving again. Um, and that that had, that had scared me. And I, recently I've been trying to make sure that a lot of my things were um, PowerPoints and things that I had already typed in rather than me trying to write on a board. Um, and, you know, as a teacher, that's really difficult, especially, you know, I teach middle school, so I don't want to upset my students with having an episode in the classroom, and I really didn't want to get to that point because, quite frankly, I'm not ready to 
not ready to hang it up and say, that's it. I, I can't go forward anymore. And I'm really trying to um, work as long as I can, as long as I'm able to work. And, you know, I modify things. Um, just today, I'm able to share with um, a friend on Facebook. She did not know that I had been diagnosed with dystonia. She had been diagnosed with dystonia a long time, um, quite a few years ago. So she understood what I was going through. And um, it was nice to have someone that, to share that with because a lot of times when you talk to people, if they see you and they see you in a good day or a good state, they don't really understand that perhaps, you know, even though you look as though you are in a good state, you are exhausted because when with the dystonia, you, your muscles are constantly contracting to the point that they finally just spasm up and freeze is about the only way to describe it, that they just tense up. Um, there's no more movement and they, do, whatever movement that they decide to go in is sometimes the opposite movement from which they're designed to go. So, um, just a few weeks ago, I actually had an episode in my foot and I heard the tendons tearing in my, in my foot as my toe decided to go the other way. So today during my examination, that was the first thing that she noticed was she asked me to lift up my toe and my big toe would not move. And she said, is there a problem? And I said, yes, the last episode that I had with it, I said, I could hear, I could hear things tearing and I cannot lift my toes anymore on that side. Um, and that's from the dystonia where it has ripped things apart. And you don't really think about that. You don't think about the time that you're like, I teach, so I'm talking all the time. And at times my voice will just completely cut out and the students are, do you have laryngitis? Um, are you sick? And it's difficult to explain to them that no, you're not sick, um, that your vocal cords have just decided to spasm up and they're no longer going to work the way that you want them to. Or, you know, coming home after a long day and you're exhausted, even though you probably didn't do anything any different from one day to the next, but sometimes just the moving and trying to move things that don't want to move or that have probably been fasciculating all day on their own where the muscle is just completely tired. And I know on those days, if I don't lay down and I don't rest and I don't try to get some type of relief, um, the next day is going to be more difficult. And I'm probably looking at pushing another episode and I, I try to avoid that and I try to avoid things that I know will trigger um, something and you can't always do that. I mean, sometimes just sitting watching TV and you have an episode and it was probably because I've been going all week and now it's just catching up with me and that's been the norm for me. But we talked about a plan and for looking at things and she said, well, because you're teaching, I'm not gonna change your medications right now. She said, you're gonna come back and see me in June when you're no longer teaching, um, as in I'm off for the summer. And as long as I'm not teaching this summer and I'm not planning on doing a lot of things, then we're gonna start changing around the medications to see if we can't find something or some kind of relief for me. Because I, I told her, I said that the doctor who had originally placed me on the sentiment um, informed me that it was not going to be a permanent solution and it was not going to be 100% effective. I said, but um, I went from barely being able to, you know, three lift my leg up three inches and, and walk up a step um, to being able to function somewhat. And that was a big deal because at the time and the way that I felt um, in 2016, when I first went to the neurologist, 
there. Um, I was looking at just calling it quits and saying that that was it, that I was going to have to file for disability. Um, I could not push it anymore. I was afraid I was going to be in a wheelchair um, just because things were so bad. And so now, uh, you know, I've had some relief from, um, I've had some relief from some symptoms. It's not been perfect and it's not been 100% but I have been able to function and that in itself to me is, is a big deal. Um, but I go back in June and we're going to look at some different medications, maybe finding some um, more relief, whether it is from the triggers. Um, I know that at times I can be overly sensitive. I, I can sense when these things are going to happen just because um, I get to the point where, you know, maybe wearing a certain shoe, a particular shoe, like I have only two pairs of shoes that I can wear now because depending on where they touch my feet, um, when I'm having, um, if I'm feeling overly sensitive, um, it will trigger one. And so I've limited, you know, the shoes that I wear and I've limited a lot of things, even clothing. I, you know, people may turn around and look and say, well, you wear the same pieces of clothing over and over and over again. And it's because I have tried, I will put things on and wear them. And I will not make them out of, make it out of the house because it will touch something or a certain way. And at that point, I have to remove it because I know that if it continues to touch that particular spot um, throughout the day, then I am going to have an episode. And I don't know if anyone else out there, you know, have experiences that same thing with dystonia that maybe, um, you know, certain triggers will and constantly, you know, touching. Like for me, it's the, the side of my foot, like the outer portion of my foot right there at um, the soul, just one little particular spot. And if something complete touches that constantly, then it triggers something or, you know, um, I, I have, um, there's a certain place in my shoulder and I have one particular bra that I can't wear because it touches a certain spot and it's horrible and um i end up like losing my right arm because of it um and i've had that happen where i just could not move my right arm and so um those kinds of things in <laughs> end up happening and there's really no way to change it there's no way to um you know to to do or really nothing that I can do about it. But, um, you know, let me know down below in, in the comments, are you having the same issues as far as um, the dystonia, you know, or do you have certain triggers that you know of things that if this happens, then you're going to have this type of issue. Um, I'd be interested to know that. But anyways, um, hopefully by June, I'll have another update for you as we start to talk about changing up the medications and some of the things that uh, we're going to go through. But uh, until then, have a great and blessed day, and I wish you well.